display fireworks enjoyed by millions across the country. But fireworks are explosives that require great care in handling and storage, and particularly when attempting to dispose of them. April 8, 2011, a tragedy in Waipahu, Hawaii, near Honolulu. An explosion and fire killed five workers at a hillside storage facility used by Donaldson Enterprises Incorporated, or DEI. The company had been hired by a federal contractor to dispose of illegal fireworks seized by the government. The Chemical Safety Board investigated and found that there are no national standards for safely disposing of fireworks, and the company's procedures were extremely unsafe. Fireworks have been around for centuries, so we were surprised to learn that there are no good practice procedures for their disposal. And we also found that the federal government did not require fireworks disposal contractors to demonstrate that they could perform the work safely. When federal agencies seize illegal imports, they are typically turned over to a single large federal contractor for storage, sale, or disposal. That contractor is the VSE Corporation of Alexandria, Virginia. From 2007 to 2010, federal customs agents seized three imported fireworks shipments entering Honolulu from China. The fireworks had been labeled for consumer use, but actually were far more powerful professional display grade. The illegal fireworks were eventually turned over to VSE for disposal. VSE subcontracted the work to DEI, a small Hawaii-based company that specialized in the destruction of military explosives. VSE procurement selected DEI for several reasons. DEI was a local company already storing the seized fireworks in the Hillside facility, and its proposal was determined to be the best overall value for the government. VSE was unaware that despite DEI's military ordinance background, the company had no experience with fireworks disposal. With no good practice standards to follow, DEI improvised a disposal plan and submitted it to VSE, which approved it, deferring to DEI as the expert. DEI's plan was to soak the fireworks in diesel fuel up to 48 hours desensitizing them so they could be burned without exploding. Work began in the summer of 2010 under a tent outside of the cave-like storage facility, or magazine, where DEI had been keeping the fireworks. After soaking the fireworks, DEI personnel transported them to a local shooting range to be burned. But there was a problem. Some fireworks were not just burning, but were exploding. The diesel fuel was not penetrating the aerial shells well enough. DEI then decided to disassemble these firework tubes by hand and cut one-inch slits in the aerial shells so the diesel fuel would soak in better. But CSB investigators found that the company did not follow good process safety principles by analyzing the hazards of this new disposal method. Disassembling the fireworks was a major change to the disposal process. Good safety practice would have called for a thorough hazard analysis, as well as a comprehensive review of the potential safety impacts of the proposed change. But this was never done. Instead, in March 2011, to speed up the process, DEI changed its protocol yet again. Now, DEI workers began filling separate cardboard boxes with aerial shells and loose black powder a highly explosive mixture of charcoal, sulfur, and potassium nitrate used to propel the fireworks into the air. Once again, DEI did not analyze the safety implications of the procedure change. This procedure dramatically increased the explosive hazards inside the magazine. Ali Reza is an explosives expert and worked with the CSB on the DEI investigation. As you're physically breaking up the fireworks and separating these charges, you're exposing yourself to the black powder. Once you have loose black powder uh, in contact with materials that can create friction, an ignition is extremely likely. On the morning of April 8, 2011, under the tent outside of the magazine, 
Five DEI employees were taking apart one-inch firework tubes known as sky festivals. A sixth worker was cleaning up inside. Using metal tools, the DEI workers cut the firework tubes and separated out the aerial shells and the black powder. Around 8.30 a.m., as the workers continued to take the fireworks apart, it started raining. The six DEI employees began moving the boxes of black powder, aerial shells, and partially disassembled fireworks to just inside the magazine. One used a metal hand truck. In addition, the workers brought in folding metal chairs, a rolling office chair, and the metal tools. Five employees remained inside the magazine as the supervisor stepped outside to make a phone call. Just before 9 a.m., there was a loud explosion. Fireworks began shooting out of the magazine entrance as the supervisor scrambled to escape. As the blaze spread, fireworks continued to ignite. The explosion and fire fatally injured the five Donaldson employees inside the magazine. One victim was in his 50s. The other four were young men in their 20s. The CSB determined the explosion was likely triggered when pyrotechnic powder on the floor of the magazine was ignited by heat, shock, or friction as DEI employees moved materials around inside. Another possible ignition source, static from household trash bags that were being used to line the boxes of black powder. While the exact ignition source could not be determined, Strong possibilities include friction from the office chair rolling over the loose explosive powder on the magazine floor, or a metal spark from the hand truck, which was blown over 100 feet from the magazine entrance when the explosion occurred. Once the powder ignited, fire likely spread to the boxes of disassembled firework components, setting off the mass explosion. The CSB found the root causes of the explosion went far beyond DEI's flawed procedures. For instance, we found there are no federal, state, or local codes, regulations, or standards that establish safety requirements or provide guidance on proper ways to dispose of fireworks. There is a significant backlog of seized fireworks that are being stored legally in magazines all across the country because there is no good mechanism to dispose of them. The OSHA Process Safety Management Standard covers the manufacturing of fireworks, but not their disposal. Instead, the disposal of confiscated fireworks is regulated by the EPA under the Federal Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, or RICRA. But RICRA regulations focus primarily on protecting the environment from hazardous waste, not on worker safety. In its final report, the CSB recommended that the EPA improve its regulations to require rigorous safety management practices for fireworks disposal. Some fire departments and police departments have developed procedures where they try to destroy illegal fireworks. And the problem that you run into is because there is no industry best practice or industry guideline, they use their judgment in developing procedures. And clearly what we saw in Hawaii is the judgment that was exercised was not good enough and it caused five workers to lose their lives. Around the country, accidents continue to occur when fireworks disposal methods are improvised in the absence of regulations and good practice guidelines. For example, on the 4th of July in 2012, a volunteer was killed in an explosion when he and others were using an earthen pit to dispose of fireworks that had not functioned properly during a display in Lansing, Kansas. As a result of these incidents, the CSB recommended that the National Fire Protection Association develop specific guidance for the safe disposal of fireworks. The CSB said the guidance should, at a minimum, discourage the disassembly of fireworks as a method of disposal and minimize the accumulation of explosive materials. Safety guidelines and regulations are crucial for conducting hazardous activities such as fireworks disposal. But it is equally important that throughout the contracting process, government agencies and other organizations consider health and safety. Federal law enforcement agencies seize a wide range of items around the country. 
from cars to livestock to handbags and perfume, as well as hazardous materials such as fireworks and explosives. VSE Corporation, the government's prime contractor for disposal of these goods, lacked expertise in fireworks disposal and had awarded the subcontract to DEI without evaluating the company's qualifications or proposed methods. In addition, when DEI twice modified its disposal procedure, VSE did not object, believing DEI to be the expert. But the CSB found that the Federal Acquisition Regulation, which governs how federal contracts are awarded and managed, does not require safety to be considered when determining the qualifications of a potential contractor or subcontractor. And neither do supplemental contracting regulations from the Treasury Department, which awarded VSE the government's prime contract to handle seized property. Other federal agencies, such as the Department of Defense, have developed specialized safety requirements for contractors who work with ammunition and explosives. But in the case of VSE and DEI, this kind of strict contractor oversight was lacking. The board's final report recommended that the federal acquisition regulation be amended to require reviews of company safety records and training and the ability to safely handle hazardous materials prior to receiving federal contracts. And the board urged the Treasury Department to develop a new policy for selecting contractors and subcontractors that handle explosives, including fireworks, based on the Defense Department's more rigorous safety requirements. The key CSB findings, fireworks disposal accidents can be prevented through comprehensive safety requirements, adequate contractor selection and oversight, and new good practice guidelines, standards, and regulations. The explosion and fire that killed five Donaldson Enterprises employees was preventable. The CSB believes that workers involved in fireworks disposal deserve to be better protected. Thank you for watching the CSB safety video. For more information on the CSB's Donaldson Enterprises investigation, please visit csb.gov.